Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today I'll be showing you how to install the VirtualBox guest editions on Debian 11. What I have in front of me here is a virtual machine running in VirtualBox and you can see I have Debian 11 installed in the background, but the scaling is not quite right. And if I go through and hit the display settings, I don't have the proper resolution to select from the list. What I need is 1920 by 1080, a 16 to nine aspect ratio, but that's not available. Well, installing the guest editions CD will fix this because it adds certain drivers that allows the virtual machine and the host computer to interact better and put some extra drivers in for various different tools and utilities. All right, in order to start this process, what you'll do is go up to the top, hit devices, and insert the guest edition CD image. You can also do this in full screen mode, and that's what I'll be doing the rest of the tutorial in by hitting Control F and switching to the full screen mode. By default, in VirtualBox, you'll have this little menu at the bottom, which you can hover over to get, hit devices, and again, hit the insert guest editions CD. This will actually attach the CD without any information on screen here, but we can launch it by hitting activities, going down to find the files for the file browser, click on that. Now that we have this opened, we can see that there's a VBox GAS 6.122, at least for me, mounted on the system. I'm going to click on this, and now I notice that there's a few files and folders here. I don't wanna do much with this quite yet. Instead, I wanna right click and hit open in terminal. Using Debian, it is best to install your virtual editions through the terminal, it's the easiest way, because we're going to have to install some packages here. Let me increase the size of the terminal so we can see things better. Right now, I'm in the media CD-ROM folder. So if I do PWD, we'll see that. Root directory, media, CD-ROM zero. Yours might be a little different, but it doesn't matter. That was the whole point of right click and hitting open with terminal so it opens the proper directory. Here on my system, I cannot use sudo with this current user. Yours might be able to, you can test it by doing sudo su and that would log you in as the root user. Instead, the way I have this Debian 11 set up, I'll clear things out and do su space root and then press enter. You can also do su space dash or hyphen and press enter. Put in your root user password if you have a root user and that will log you in now as root. I can see that I have root in front here, meaning I am logged in as root because we'll be running these commands through the root user. Notice that the directory has changed here and we know which directory we're in. We can copy and we can paste that directory so we can move into it by doing CD space and just paste the directory in or type it in yourself, press enter. Now we are in the media CD-ROM zero directory and it contains all of these files in here. The one we're interested in and the script we wanna run is this VBox Linux editions.run file. So how can we do that? Well, we'll type in sh capital VBox Linux editions.run and now things will be started and the image will try installing, but what we'll notice is it cannot install. It says kernel headers not found for target kernel. Please install them and re-execute this script. So notice you did not install anything. We'll clear things out so we can see things better. There is an error, and that's because Debian 11 does not come standard with the Linux kernel headers built in. So we can install them, no big deal. But we'll also have to install one more other package. We'll do that fairly simply. But before we do, make sure to remember to smash that like button for me. And let's type in sudo apt install. And we'll want the build-essential package. Spelt that wrong. There we go. And then space Linux dash headers. Let me make sure we can see this all. It's a little goofy looking. There we go. Linux dash headers dash dollar sign. You're going to need open and close parentheses. In between those open and close parentheses, you'll need uname space dash r. And that should be enough to get the build essential package, which contains some build tools. And then the Linux headers for the kernel are in the second command. And the uname dash r just helps us get the proper version of the Linux headers for the current system. So we'll press enter and we'll be asked whether or not we want to install everything. It's about 257 megabytes. Yes, we do. We'll just press enter and then give this a few moments to install everything. It shouldn't take too long, but it might take a few moments in order to get everything pulled down and install the headers. A few minutes later. After everything's installed, we're back to the 
terminal here. I'm going to clear things out so we can see things better. And we're ready to rerun our command here. If I do ls, I want to do sh, and then again, vbox linux editions.run. And we'll try rerunning this again. See what happens this time. Looks like it says installing modules. Now it's building the modules and you'll notice it's still thinking here. We haven't dropped back into the command line quite yet. So give it a few moments here to build the modules and install all the drivers. You'll see generating a new boot image. And now if everything turned out correctly, no errors will be posted. And it says that running the kernel modules or the drivers here will not be replaced until the system is restarted. So the next thing, of course, we want to do is restart the system by doing sudo reboot and give it a few moments to reboot things here in your virtual machine. A few moments later. All right, we're loading right back in. Okay, I'll log in with my user and look at that. Congratulations, if you made it this far, you've officially installed the VBox guest editions modules and they're running because it has completely filled the screen now as far as the resolution goes. My aspect ratio is proper. And if I go into display settings, I can see that 1920 by 1080, the 16 by nine aspect ratio, at least for me, is already set and proper. Having these tools and utilities will make things a lot easier for you to interact between your host system and the virtual machine. It's highly suggested to use because you can do things like bi-directional copy, copying, pasting between the host and the virtual machine and many more things. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.